Hi there, this is Andrew Maury of Drea Renee Knits, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a bark four stitch decrease. So we do this decrease in brioche knitting to decrease out four stitches. So let's get started. I am using this pale gray as my main color with this pink is my contrast. So I'm going to be doing this decrease on the right side of my work with my main color. I'm just going to get into my work a little bit. I'll show this decrease twice. Um, the first time I'll show it English and the second time Continental, although there's very little actual knitting during this decrease. So you can really kind of follow along with either. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to back out of this decrease just in case you make a mistake. So let me just get into my work a little bit so that I can get to the point where I want to decrease. If you are new to brioche, I have quite a few other brioche videos here on my YouTube channel. I have a whole brioche playlist, so I will go ahead and link that for you in the description box below. Okay, so for the bark four stitch decrease, we use five stitches to do this decrease. So we're gonna decrease out four of them and only one will remain. So what I find is helpful, especially if you're new to this decrease, is to put a little stitch marker after the fifth stitch so you know exactly how many stitches you're using. It just kind of helps keep track of things. In brioche, what can sometimes feel confusing is when we're counting stitches, every other stitch has two strands of yarn instead of just one. So here again, for this decrease, we use five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. But that's eight strands of yarn. Two, four, six, seven, eight. And so it just helps keep track. That way you know you've done all the steps by the time you've reached this marker. All right, for this decrease, you will also need a locking stitch marker. You can also use a cable needle. Um, I really do prefer this sort of locking stitch marker, one that's a little thicker and has a little heft to it. I find that these little light bulb ones kind of want to pull into the work, especially if you are using a heavier weight yarn. And a cable needle is fine, but I would recommend using one of the ones that has a really strong U-bend in them. Otherwise, you chance it slipping out while you're manipulating your other stitches. So these are my favorite. That's what I'm going to use today. All right, so for stitch number one, we are going to slip that stitch knitwise. Generally speaking, before you do this decrease, you might have a slip one yarn over before it. So that's why my yarn's hanging out right here in front because I had a slip one yarn over and now I'm doing my decrease. So slip stitch number one knitwise, slip stitch number two knitwise. When we're slipping stitches knitwise, we insert our right hand needle just like we were going to knit the stitch, but instead of knitting it, we then pull it over to our right hand needle off of the left hand needle. Stitch number three, which is what I like to call a couple, it's two strands of yarn. We're gonna place both of those onto our locking stitch marker. And then we just slip it off of our needle and let it hang to the front. Stitch number four we knit, and this is actually the only stitch out of all five of these that will be knit. So I'm bringing my yarn all the way from my slip one yarn over to knit that stitch. And now stitch number two gets passed over and off of stitch number four, which we had knit. We're now going to return stitch four to our left hand needle so that stitch number five, which is two strands, can be lifted over and off of stitch four. So really all we're doing is stacking stitches at this point to decrease them out. We're going to return stitch four to our right hand needle and now stitch number one, which is two strands will be lifted over and off. 
we're now going to return stitch three, both strands, to our left hand needle. And as you can see, these are in the same orientation they always were. They haven't been twisted at all. And now we're going to bring our knit stitch, stitch four, back over to our left hand needle. And we are going to slip stitch three over the top and off. We can now return this stitch to our right hand needle. We're all done with the decrease, but what you might notice is this big gap here. That is what happens when we had this slip one yarn over before here. It's just that the yarn's all been stretched out because we were working across eight stitches, but we only knit one of them. So it's really important in brioche decreases to give a really nice tug at the end of your decrease to make sure everything is nice and snug. If you've ever done brioche shaping and you felt like it was a little sloppy or more airy than you wanted it to be, most likely you just needed to tug out that excess a bit more. So as you can see, this is a center decrease and that is what it looks like at the end. So now I'm gonna back out of this and then I'm gonna show you the, the decrease one more time and I'm going to slow it down even more so that if you're working along with me hopefully you can go step by step with me. So to back this out and really to back out any of our knitting one of the important rules is to return the stitch to whichever needle the action happened on. So if we remember the last step was pulling stitch three over our knit stitch four, and that happened on the left hand needle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to return our stitch to my left hand needle. And now I'm going to grab both strands of stitch number three and I'm going to lift it back over onto my needle and separate it from that stitch four. I can now return stitch four to my right hand needle. I'm going to put stitch three back on its marker and drop it to the front. I am now going to pick up stitch one, both strands, and lift that over and off of our stitch four. Our stitch four is then returned to the left hand needle, and I'm going to grab both strands of stitch five oopsie doops and bring that back up and over our stitch four and now we have stitch two that needs to come back off and that occurred on the right hand needle so I'm bringing it back over to my right needle here and stitch two was a single strand so out of all these stitches only the evens stitch two and four were one strand so now I'm bringing stitch two up and over stitch four. Now at this point we had knit our fourth stitch so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to follow the path of that yarn inserting my needle back into stitch four. Now I know everything is safe because my needle tip is going along the path of my yarn so I can remove my right hand needle and unknit that stitch. Stitch three can be returned to the left hand needle. So we have stitch five, four, and three. And now stitch two, which we had slipped knitwise, so I need to untwist it. When we slip stitches knitwise, it puts a little twist in it. And same with stitch one, stitch one, <laughs> where I need to undo that twist I had put into it. Looks like I actually split my yarn a little bit there. I just wanna fix that too. All right, so now I'm back to pre-decrease. And let's try this one more time. I am going to knit that fourth stitch continental, but again, no matter how you knit, there's only one stitch knit in here, so you can pretty much follow along no matter your knitting style. So I am going to be using five stitches, double, single, double, single, double, eight strands of yarn, five stitches. Stitch number one, I slip knitwise 
inserting my needle as if to knit and passing the stitch from the left hand needle onto the right hand needle. Same for stitch number two, which is a single strand of yarn, inserting my right hand needle as if to knit and passing it from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. Stitch number three, we place on a locking stitch marker without twisting it or changing its orientation. We just put that marker right on and drop it to the front. You can lock it for some added security. Now, stitch number four, which is a single strand, we knit. We now pass our slip stitch, stitch number two, which is a single strand over the top of our knit stitch four and off the needle. We return stitch number four to our left hand needle so that stitch five can hop on top. Two strands of yarn here being passed over the top and off. We now return stitch, knit stitch number four to our right hand needle and pass stitch number one over the top and off. The reason we slipped stitch number one knit wise is when we put that twist in it that ensures that our main color lies on top of our contrast color. So that's why it's important to do that. We are now going to return stitch number three which is on our locking stitch marker back up onto the left hand needle Knit stitch number four is going to come snuggle up with our stitch number three. We're going to pass stitch number three both strands over the top and off. So only our knit stitch four remains. We slip that over to our right hand needle and we really tug out that excess yarn. So we have nice tidy work. We can now remove our little helper marker and just continue on our way. I'll knit to the end of the row just so you can see what this decrease looks like with the swatch laying flat. There we go. So there is, we've decreased four stitches a column, a bark column, a knit column, purl column, bark column, purl column, leaving this guy running up over the top. And again, it's really just stacking stitches. So we only knit one stitch, stitch number four, and all of our other stitches, we just slipped over the top and off and they stacked on top to decrease them out, leaving this really lovely center decrease. I will also write out the steps of this decrease below in the description box because if you're at all like me sometimes we need to be able to see that written out visually as well. So I will include that below. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next time. Happy knitting!